right, now we're gonna talk about the LT4 system and we're gonna go over some maintenance items as well as how to change the RO membranes out on this particular machine. Your machine on the LT4 may have the upgraded PLC package, maybe it does not, but either way, most of these uh, operational tips or hints will be able to help you and your RO system. Again, uh, this is on the LT4. So if you'll notice on the LT4, we do have some touch screens, right? And so here we can actually turn the RO system on or off by going through the RO control and we can actually turn the RO. There's an off, run, auto, semi-auto. Make sure it's in the off position before you begin to work on your RO system. Next, you'll wanna go ahead and uh, isolate your inlet water valve. For me, it's already been isolated. I have it isolated back up here. And if you're gonna change out the pre-filters, uh, which is, should be done on a monthly basis at minimal, uh, you may wanna go ahead and shut down your discharge so you don't get any backflow of water uh, from your RO system. So uh, changing your pre-filters on the back side here, you'll just relieve the pressure like so, and then you'll go ahead and turn. It's on there a little tight. Uh, you'll turn, you'll notice you're gonna get a little bit of water out, and which is perfectly normal. Here's your pre-filter, you go ahead and change that out. Pour, pour the water out of this. You can go ahead and pour the water out. Get your filtered centered on the bottom. There's a little nub on the bottom that helps to center your filter in. Spin your filter back on like so. You can also use a filter wrench. They do make filter wrenches for this RO system, or you can use a strap wrench. Uh, we've also seen some people use some oversized channel locks as well. While it's not as uh, mainly recommended, you can utilize that. Uh, so next we're gonna talk about changing out the RO membranes. Next, we're gonna go over changing the RO membranes on the LT4. Now, this also may be uh, viable for the E4 because the E4 in the later series back in 2019, 2018, they started using the fiberglass housing. So you'll need yourself a 3 16 Allen wrench. Uh, you can, I recommend using a T-handle, kind of makes things a little bit easier, but you're gonna go ahead and begin by taking off the backing plates for the end cap. So now that the backing plates are off, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the permeate tube. So now that the permeate tube's off, we can actually begin to try to remove the RO end cap. This is going to take a little bit of effort. You may need to utilize a pair of channel locks, or you may have to use uh, make yourself a special tool. You could take a threaded rod that's the same as these bolts here, thread it down, and then use a plate to slide over and then tighten a nut and could pull the end cap up. Now this is a newer machine, hasn't been used that often, so this should come out relatively easier. Okay, so trying to use channel locks to get the end caps off a little bit hard, and I was like, man, how did I do this the last time? Oh yeah, I made a T-handle. Way to go, Nate. Anyway, so a T-handle is essentially go ahead and remove the tube fitting out of the permeate hole or the permeate thread cap, and then go ahead and put a half inch nipple in, your half inch T, like so, you'll thread that on. And I wouldn't recommend gluing these on because obviously you can see you'll have to kind of assemble it. Then go ahead and throw your handles in. And then this will give you the opportunity to get some leverage and as you can see, it pulls out a lot easier. So from there, you'll go ahead and replace your end cap O-ring, your permeate port uh, O-ring, which is located in the center here. Again, the permeate port will come with your new membranes. Most membrane manufacturers send in some extra O-rings. The end adapter O-ring, however, will not because depending on the RO housing manufacturer, you may have a circle O-ring, you may have a square O-ring, uh, they may be cut differently. You'll go ahead and use a pair of channel locks to remove your membrane like so. 
And as you can see, you can just pull it up. Once you get it up, you can then go ahead and pull the old membrane out and you can push the new membrane in. So now the water flow in this particular housing is going up and because of that, the seal is down at the bottom. And so you don't have to remove the whole housing in order to install the new membrane. Uh, you can actually lubricate that seal, that brine seal, and then slide it back in. Just being careful that you don't roll that seal. It can roll pretty easily. You're going to push it back down. Don't forget to record the serial number on the RO membrane. This can help you for warranty purposes. Most membrane manufacturers prorate their warranties for up to three years. Again, it's prorated and it, they are going to ask you for information regarding to the water quality that you're feeding the machine as well as pressures and flows. So you're going to want to make sure you record that daily information that we talked about previously. So that's pretty much the deal about replacing the RO elements. You'll go ahead and remove your T handle, thread back in your tube, go ahead and get your end cap down the rest of the way and getting your backing plates reinstalled. And again, that 3 16th T handle Allen wrench. That is, that is definitely something that you want to do. I don't recommend using an impact wrench. Um, I know some people have done that in the past. Um, you can crack things or potentially strip stuff or get it too far and it can make it very difficult. If you follow All right, after you're changing your RO membranes, do not, I, we highly don't recommend, I should say do not, but we highly don't recommend just opening up all the valves and turning the power back on. That's probably not necessarily the most beneficial way to do this. And so with your RO system, uh, with the E4, uh, the LT4, I should say, I'm sorry about that. Just in a bad habit of saying the E4, but the LT4, you can go to your main menu, you can go to your RO control, and there's actually an RO state selection, and you can actually go to the fill. And if you click the fill, it will open up your inlet solenoid, and as well, if your RO inlet valve is open and your permeate and concentrate valves, if you have those, those are open. Uh, it will just basically open the solenoid valve, allowing water to flow through the solenoid and start filling your machine. And because unlike the E4, where you could actually have a visual to tell you whether or not if there was water, uh, if all the air had blood, been bled out, on the LT4, you're not gonna have that. So you're basically gonna have to go look at the drain and make sure that you've got a steady stream of water coming out. Um, this does have a timer function on it. I wanna say after a few minutes, it will shut off or it'll alarm out. You'll have to go in, reset it, um, and then do the fill state again. If you didn't wanna do that, if you have the power locked out to the machine. Again, this RO system does come equipped with one of these plastic valves and it will have a lever here. And this lever is on or off. You can actually turn it onto the on position. You can manually open the valve and it will start the water flow through. So that is something that you can take into consideration on this RO system. If you didn't want to utilize the PLC or the controller, you can manually do it with the valve itself. Now that we've filled our machine, we're going to want to go ahead and start taking what we call our startup data. Our startup data is we recommend doing every single time when you change out your RO membranes. Because you're not going to, you shouldn't be changing out your RO membranes, but maybe every two to four years, uh, depending upon water quality usage, how well you maintain your equipment, and as well as cleaning cycles and other various forms or functions of your operation. But you're going to go to that main menu and you're going to want to go to your RO summary. Your RO summary gives you your concentrate flow, your permeate flow, total flow rate, RO recovery rate, and it will also give you permeate connectivity. If you have an inlet connectivity probe, it will also give you feed connectivity. Um, and if you have uh, pressure, it'll also give you pressure displays as well. Um, these are all features that you want to make sure that you either have turned on or turned off based on your model and make and options that you have on your RO system. But you want to, at the very least, record your flows record your pressures and your pressures are all going to be based on your pressure gauges again they're going to be located throughout the ro system unlike the e4 you know you had pressure gauges that were right on your front panel on here you don't they're going to be located throughout your ro system some will be on the discharge of the pump your concentrate flow pressure will be down here on your inlet pre-filter and post pre-filter actually behind this panel so you'll have to go around get that information and then we also recommend doing your daily log at this point as well and your daily log will share some 
some of that at same information, but it will also have things like your water hardness, chlorine, and other, other various uh, data collection points that can be helpful, especially when it comes to RO membrane warranties, which you're gonna wanna have all that information. So we recommend filling out that startup sheet. And then you can hey, I just want to take a moment and say thank you for watching our video. If you found this content helpful, I could just ask for of you to go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as we're continuously trying to release more topics and more information regarding reverse osmosis systems as well as maintenance and troubleshooting. Thanks again and have a great day.